every time it's terrifying. The question that everyone wants to hear the answer to is... Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Hey guys, I am a robotics engineer. And I'll have to admit, my job isn't as exciting because I don't deal with robots like the ones from Boston Dynamics, but we make, well, fancy looking machines for industrial automation, which means from time to time I get to play with robotics arms and once a year I get to stir at very deadly robots during fight fest competition. So robots can be interesting, well paid and, well, super exciting, including battle in here. So it's time to answer the question, who let the dogs out? And obviously it's Petoy, because the first robotic kit was a nibble, which was a cat. And after successful Kickstarter, they come up with this machine. This is Bittle and it's a very similar kit. Uh, this time we have a dog to play with. This robotic dog comes as a DIY kit, which means you'll have to assemble it together. Now mine was partially assembled, but you also have options to have it completely shipped as a, you know, ready-to-use unit, or, well, in bits, because I believe that's how the Kickstarter backers has received those. Bittle is a server-based robot, controllable by Bluetooth, infrared and Wi-Fi, and thanks to black and yellow aesthetics, it can be easily compared to a spot from Boston Dynamics, and I wouldn't blame you, especially that both will pose serious challenges when it comes to programming new actions and movement options. But thanks to open source, you're not starting from scratch, and your job is as easy or as difficult as you want it to be. I've assembled mine on a live stream and it was a great time and people were curious what it's gonna be like. After the assembly process, I dived in into documentation to understand better what I'm dealing with and what is required. So I have a couple of assembly tips for you if you just got yours and you're looking to get started quickly. To be frank, it was way too easy to skip the manual for me because of included picture of the exploded robot so I could figure out which part goes where and I think that was my first mistake. The instructions are quite decent describing what you have to do first to enjoy the robot quicker than well, working aimlessly without any guidance. So do follow them. But if you just want to dive in, don't assemble legs just yet because First, go through calibration, and calibration is going to be super important if you want your robots to behave well. To complete the calibration quickly, use the Bluetooth module provided, plug it to your robot and connect it via mobile app. That way you'll be able to set the dog to a calibration pose, lock the limbs in place and adjust them to correct position, and, well, voila! This was by far the quickest and the easiest way to get everything working as it's supposed to. Thanks to included infrared remote with various poses and movement options, you don't even have to open any software to start experimenting with movements. I mean, there are very basic poses, movement patterns, and a couple of tricks that Bit Bittle is capable of, but soon enough your desire and curiosity will lead you to some serious programming. And this is where the difficulty can ramp up really quickly. If you don't think you can handle C++ programming just yet, you can open up the web browser and connect visual programming interface from Seed Studio and program your robot this way. It's going to be much easier to get started and it will allow you to chain different movements, write new commands, etc. This is actually great because, well, thanks to the simplicity of this programming, the uh, entry barrier is very, very low, while the whole thing can still remain challenging. But if you're not a stranger to C++, then you can jump into Arduino and use open source libraries to start programming new behaviors. And speaking of those big little behaviors, split into the following skills. First, we have instincts, which are very basic movement patterns or tricks that are being stored in EPROM. Then we have newbility, which just like instinct are responsible for the same tricks or moves, but they are stored in Progmem instead. 
That way, uh, BitTorrent ecosystem reduces the number of writes to EEPROM, which is, well, long-term damaging. Lastly, we have gates or behaviors, which basically means that we take a frame of a position and we animate it over a period of frame to create either continuous or sequential movements, and those are the building blocks of instincts or new abilities. At first, you're probably going to be dealing with instincts and new abilities. You'll either edit them until you understand the robotics behavior of the quadruped and what uh, needs to be changed in these two have successful behaviors. But once your confidence levels are high, you can start actually programming your own gates. And this is where everything becomes super difficult because you'll have to manage so many things at the same time to pull off successful movement. Suddenly, it's not just about holding a pose because you'll have to balance several things at the same time, including balance, momentum, and synchronize a movement on different servos at different frames, which is very, very challenging if you're just getting started with stuff like that. This proves that the Bittle robot can be quite challenging for a long time to come. And that's before we even talk about the ability to add the Raspberry Pi on top and use stuff like um, computer vision or machine learning. I initially touched on the infrared remote as one of the ways of controlling the robot, but that's not the only way. You also have a Bluetooth interface, which you can interact with the app, but that's for the most part works exactly the same way as infrared with, well, the advantage that you don't have to aim at the robot. Lastly, you have also Wi-Fi, which can be used to either stream the commands or control the robot in over the Wi-Fi. But most of the time you'll be using this small adapter which allows you to send the commands from your computer to the robot and try new things out. But that's not the only way to teach old dog new tricks. And if you want to add more brains to your battle, you can use Raspberry Pi boards. Now by default it's compatible with Raspberry Pi 3A. That's the default form factor that matches the controller board on top of the dog. But it's not the only board that's gonna fit. Now, you can experiment with regular Raspberry Pi 4 board and, uh, you know, as long as you be mindful of the fact that this is much heavier board and it will influence the balancing of the robots and you'll have to probably work around that one, then, yeah, you're free to add the regular board. But probably the best board to add to the dog is right now Raspberry Pi 02, which is small, weights next to nothing and have enough brains to actually submit all the data you need and Wi-Fi connectivity. Regardless of which platform you're going to pick, you're going to spend days learning this. I'm just getting started and I'm making lots of mistakes and, well, for the most part, the Bittle is misbehaving. And no matter how hard I try and how hard I make it work, well, it's a difficult platform to master and there is no way in hell, despite all the hard training by Bittle, it will ever compete against the proper fighting robots. I mean, it's not what is it made for. I did, however, come up with a bit of a home automation cheating that allows me to control this robotic dog. Can you guess how did I make it happen? Alexa, wake up doggy. Good boy, you wanna say hi to everyone? Hi! Oh, don't be shy, just say hi to everyone. Ah, oh, look at him, it's very, very well-trained dog. What would you do if you see a gun? Like me holding a gun. He would play dead. Hey, come back in here. Because you've been such a good boy, we're gonna let you sleep. Alexa, doggy sleep. Well, I will reveal the answer at the end of the video. You already know that you'll have to be patient with your Bittle if you want to take it from simple remote controlling toys into an awesome creature with some brains behind it. But that's not the only flaw, and there is a couple of things I would like to highlight. One of the biggest disappointments is the fact that actual kit doesn't come with a Raspberry Pi cover, so if you opt out to use a Raspberry Pi with your Bittle, you'll end up with Bittle running without its back cover. It's a shame because, well, it would look so much neater. If you do, however, have a 3D printer, I'm sure you're gonna find some resources online that will let you print something custom and add to your doggy. Second thing, while the Bittle itself is pretty sturdy and tough and survived a couple of jumps from the table, obviously, uh, the head attachment is very weak. 
I mean, every single time the beetle jumps off the ledge and lands on even carpeted floor, it loses his head. Which is a disappointing, especially to that to mount the head back I'll have to take out the battery and for that I'll have to remove the battery, then fiddle with the attachment system, click it in and then remount the battery again. I wish the head mount was done in a slightly different way. However, I do discover that without a head, Peter looks like uh, this uh, crab thingy from a Half-Life game. And lastly, it's not the fault of the Bittle, but you'll quickly discover that while designing your gates or behaviors, that this is very challenging and balancing the robot without having the ability to actually move the legs to a side is a serious constraint. It will enable your creative thinking, but, well, I wish there was a version in which you can also move the legs to the side to help with the balancing of the robot. That would be very, very helpful. Right, I guess it's time to reveal the secret behind voice and gesture controls of the Beetle. I did mention I cheat a little bit thanks to the home automation. If you look behind me, there is a camera in there. And this is not just a simple IP camera. This is a Gara G3H, which has gesture recognition and infrared blaster. And every time you would recognize a different gesture, or I would issue a Alexa control, then you would send the command back to the camera to send infrared signal corresponding with typical movements. And that's how I made Beetle respond to my voice commands and the gestures in front of him. I know it's hardly programming because it's as simple as issuing controllers from the infrared blaster, but it shows how flexible these things are and how creative you can get with it. So, if you want to adopt your very own Bittle, check out the description of this video where you're gonna find a link to this robotic fella and a discount so you can get it slightly cheaper. As for now, big thanks for Beto for sending me this so I could actually have an awesome and terrible time with it. Uh, and yes, I would definitely encourage everyone uh, that is into robotics to give it a go and discover how challenging programming robots can be. As for now guys, thanks so much for watching, I hope you've learned a thing or two, let me know in the comments. And as usual guys, I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what next, then you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you all this. But I have a couple of social media where you usually can find extra content and engage in conversation with me, so take advantage of that. Right, thanks so much for watching, see you next time. Bye! So if you guys are interested and you would like to adopt very... <laughs> What are you gonna do? Stay there. So, 